The next thing we're working our way towards is being able to do circuit calculations. Um, and so we have to start talking about some of the elements that are going to make up circuits. And the first thing we're going to talk about is capacitors. And the thing they do is capacitance. Um, and so capacitance or capacitors um, are a way to store and deliver charge uh, to other circuit elements. Um, capacitors are uh, used in all types of electric and electronic equipment. Um, and uh, as far as uh, medical related devices, um, uh, defibrillators are really just big capacitors. Um, and so um, the defibrillators. Um, and so what happens with a defibrillator is you store this huge amount of charge that then you can send through a person's heart muscle uh, very quickly. You get this giant electric current and that shock can uh, can re uh, sort of recalibrate the timing of the heart muscle. Okay, so in order to talk about capacitors, I'm going to have to um, give the idea of a battery or any kind of uh, um, voltage source. And I said before that, um, so remember, Voltage is an electric potential difference between two points. Okay, so if you have a battery, and I'm going to just draw, kind of draw a diagram of what a battery looks like. You have these two terminals. Uh, you have a positive terminal and a negative terminal. And it's given in terms of a voltage V. What that means is between the positive terminal and the negative terminal, uh, there is a electric potential difference of... Um, of delta V. And what that says is that the electric potential is V volts higher on the positive side than it is on the negative side. If you took the electric potential of the positive side, subtracted the electric potential of the negative side, the difference you would get is the voltage of the battery. And so now let's say that we take a battery and connect the positive terminal to one conducting material, um, one material that conducts electricity. So for now, I'm just going to um, draw it as like a sphere. And then the other one, you connect to another conducting material. Um, and uh, Again, I'm going to say that this battery has a voltage of V. Well, that voltage of V, like I said, um, is an indication that the electric potential of the positive charge of the positive terminal is V higher than the electric potential of the negative terminal. And when you hook this conducting material up through a wire, um, what you get is that the electric potential all along the wire and into this conducting material, all of that has this same electric potential as the terminal. And the one connected to the negative terminal, this whole wire and this conducting material has the same electric potential as the negative terminal, which means that if you take the voltage between any point 
on the wire or on the conducting material that's connected to the positive, and then um, take the electric potential anywhere along that negative wire, that negative conducting material, you'd get that same voltage of V. Okay, so anywhere along the positive wire, positive conducting material, anywhere along the negative wire, negative conducting material, if you take the voltage between those, the difference in potential, uh, in electric potential, you'd get that same voltage V. And what that change in electric potential does is it gives a positive charge on this side. So I'm going to call that positive Q. And it puts a negative charge on this side. Call that negative Q. And this is not going to be a very well-designed capacitor. It won't be terribly good at storing charge, but it will store charge. It does work as a capacitor. And if we were going to draw a diagram of the circuit as it is here, as we're starting to get used to thinking about circuits, um, we would represent the battery like this with a long line on the positive side and a short line on the negative side. And we would connect uh, these to the two sides of the capacitor. So this double lines with the same length is a capacitor, okay? Uh, this battery has a voltage V. This capacitor has a capacitance C. There's something you have to be a little careful about here. Um, capacitance, uh, we, we represent that with a C, but remember that the unit C represents charge, so that's something different. So when we talk about the capacitance as a C, that's not, don't get that confused with the units of charge, which are Coulombs. Now, the ability of this capacitor, this, you know, we designed this very basic looking capacitor, and the ability of this thing to store charge is defined by its capacitance. And its capacitance C is equal to that amount of charge that's been stored on, in each of these two uh, conducting materials divided by the voltage that we needed, the difference in electric potential that we needed, um, in order to put the charge there. A better capacitor, a bigger capacitor, is one where for the same voltage with that same battery, you can store a lot more charge. The SI units for capacitance um, you can tell from the equation that it's units of Coulomb over volts. And um, we give this its own name, the farad, and abbreviate it with a capital F. Well, because, remember that when I introduced the unit of Coulomb, I said that that's a really big unit. One unit of, one uh, Coulomb of charge is a lot of charge. Um, and because of the relationship in the definition of a farad, a farad is, farad is also a very big unit of capacitance. Uh, it's very rare that you would have a capacitor that's a full one farad capacitance. Usually, um, the capacitors that you see in, um, in circuits are microfarad, nanofarad, picofarad, on that order. Uh, the most common way that a capacitor is made, you know, remember that as this picture shows, all you need is two different conducting materials to make a capacitor. But a, a capacitor that you made like this with two balls of, of uh, copper or something, it, it wouldn't have a very big capacitance. It wouldn't be very useful as a capacitor. But the way to make useful capacitors is... Um, parallel plates. So 
um, the usual way that capacitors are made is that you put a parallel plate here and another parallel plate here and those two plates are conductors and then when you hook it up to the battery you get a positive charge on this side and a negative charge on this side um, and uh, I gotta hook this up and now from this fact, you can tell why the symbol for capacitor is what it is in circuits with the two parallel plates, because that's a, an effective way to get capacitance out of two conductors. Um, and we're going to see that the distance between these two plates is an important uh, factor in how well they work as a capacitor. Uh, one thing that's interesting is... Um, when I was talking about electric potential, I talked about the electric potential between two parallel charge plates. And now you can see that that's, that's an important thing because capacitors are important to us. And so the fact that, remember, the main thing about um, two charged parallel plates was that the electric field was constant between the two and it always pointed from the positive to the negative based on the fact that that electric field is constant, we're gonna be able to do some pretty simple calculations that let us figure out uh, energy storage, um, capacitance of a parallel plate system. Okay, one more thing about these parallel plates um, before we start getting into calculations. Uh, this would be a pretty inconvenient way to uh, configure a, a capacitor because these plates have to be pretty big to have a high capacitance. So instead of keeping these parallel plates like this, you can imagine what they do instead is you start with this idea of two parallel plates and then you wrap them in sort of like a sandwich wrap pattern. Okay, and so you can get, have the effect of two big parallel plates um, and, uh, but the effect is uh, compressed into a much smaller package that then you can put in small circuits and things like that. So most of the time, if you buy a capacitor in an electronics store, it'll look something like, um, a cylinder like this, and there'll be a terminal on this side and a terminal on this side. And these are the two wires that you would connect to the battery in the examples that I've shown. And that cylinder, um, it'll have a casing around it, but inside that casing will just be this coiled up pair of parallel plates. Okay, so the round part is the is in the shape of those coiled up plates. Okay, well, um, if you have these parallel plates in this configuration that's shown, um, and you have a vacuum between the two plates, the material between the two plates we're going to see does matter, but let's say that it's there's no air, no anything between those two plates. Um, so if that space between the plates is a vacuum, um, then the capacitance of the parallel plate system is equal to 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12th. Uh, this is a 
constant that comes up over and over again called the permittivity of free space um, times the surface area of the plates that are facing each other. So that's the area D divided by the distance D between the two that I drew here in red. Um, so this is the uh, surface area or let me get the surface out of there. Let's just call it the area of one side of the plates. If on the other hand, there's a material um, so if that space is filled with an insulating material, now this wouldn't work if you had a conducting material in between the two plates because you couldn't store that charge. That's If you put a wire between the two plates, every charge that you separated in the in the way that it's shown here, would just travel across the wire to put this back in uh, equilibrium. But if that space is filled with, uh, with an insulating material, then the capacitance of this system is equal to the same constant, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12th times another constant, the Greek letter kappa, and I'll tell you what that is in a second, times the same area divided by D. And this uh, constant kappa is called the dielectric constant. And that's different for different insulating materials. Okay, so looking at these equations, there are two ways um, to increase the capacitance of a pair of plates. So we're going to say you can increase it by increasing the area of the plates, but let's say now we're stuck with these two plates. What can we do to make this a more effective capacitor? Um, okay. The first way if you look at this equation, uh, is to decrease the distance between the two plates. That seems sort of surprising, but the closer those two plates are to each other, uh, the higher the capac capacitance will be. So to increase the capacitance, you want to decrease that distance. Um, and if you want to see why that is, uh, I'm not going to go through the derivation of it, but remember that, um, that in the electric potential, uh, lecture video, I calculated the electric potential difference between two plates and the distance between those plates came into the calculation. And so what you get is that if that distance is smaller, with the same amount of charge on the two plates, um, you get a smaller electric potential between them. You can go back and look at that if you want. And that means that the battery can, can force more charge in to make the, the electric potential on each side equal the electric potential of the battery terminals. So the smaller that distance is, the better the capacitor works. Uh, the second way that you can do it is find an insulating material that has a higher dielectric constant. Um, 
So you can do it by increasing the dielectric constant. Um, and for the material, yeah, the calculations that we're going to do, the problems I'll give you, I'm, I'm always going to give you the dielectric constant. But um, paper that's uh, covered in wax or something is often a, um, a good, uh, cheap, effective um, dielectric material. Okay, so let's do an example. Uh, let's say that we have a parallel plate capacitor. Um, and let's say that it has a capacitance of 2.0 times 10 to the minus 8 farads um, with a distance of 1 times 10 to the minus third meters um, and with no dielectric. So we're going to treat that as if it's a vacuum. Uh, then the question is, what can we change the capacitance to if we reduce the distance so reduce the distance to 5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters and a dielectric material with a dielectric constant of 3 Okay, well, um, so first we're going to start out with the original capacitor. And so we know that the capacitance is equal to the permittivity of free space uh, this is with no dielectric, so you can think of there being no cap, or you can think of cap as being equal to 1. And then uh, times the area of one of the plates divided by the distance of 1 times 10 to the minus third meters. And this lets us calculate the area of one of the plates, and you get 2.26 meters uh, squared. And now we're going to uh, calculate, we're going to use this same equation with the new values now that we know that area. And so we want to calculate the capacitance of the new format, uh, and it's equal to 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12th times the dielectric constant of 3. The area hasn't changed. This is still 2.26 meters squared. And then divided by the new distance, which is 5 times 10 to the minus fourth. Plug all that stuff in, and you get that in the new configuration, the capacitance is 1.20 times 10 to the minus seventh farads. So, um, getting close to a 10 time uh, increase in capacitance compared to what it was in the first case. Um, in separating these charges, uh, we are um, putting energy into this capacitor. And so one thing that we're often going to have to calculate is the energy that's stored in the capacitor. Um, and in order to come up with these equations, uh, the way you would go about it, I'm just sort of going to sketch this out, um, but what you would do is imagine that, you know, 
instead of doing it through the wires using the battery, imagine that you separated the charges on the two sides of the capacitor by just taking tiny little increments of charge and moving it from one to the other one. And you just kept doing that and kept doing it. When you move the first infinitesimal bit of charge, uh, the electric potential would be zero because uh, there's no difference in charge yet. But each time you move a little charge, it changes the electric potential a little bit. And so uh, what you would be doing is you could think of like each little, so I'm going to write this in a calculus way, but uh, you know, don't get scared away by the calculus. It's just we're just taking little bits of charge and seeing how the electric potential changes as we do that. And what we're going to do is measure the work required in each case. So this is a little bit of work that is caught, that is done on the particle to move it from one place to the other. Um, and this is equal to, um, at any instant, it's equal to the electric potential difference times the little bit of charge. Okay, that's just using the definition of electric potential difference. Okay. Um, and we know from the definition of capacitance that this electric potential difference we can write as the charge divided by the capacitance, and so substitute that in. And then all it is is a matter of adding this up for every little bit, and the way you do that is with an integral. And so we're going to add it up and see what the total work was in order to move all these charges. So you get that the work is equal to uh, the integral of q dq over c as we go from starting with no charge on these plates to a charge of capital Q on these plates. And it comes out to be uh, 1 over 2 um, times the capacitance times little q squared evaluated from 0 to q. Okay, that's just, I'm using the, um, the polynomial rule for integration. And what we get is q squared over 2c, and that is the energy stored in the charge, uh, stored in the capacitor, sorry. Uh, well, using the definition of capacitance. Um, you know, we know that the capacitance is equal to Q divided by the potential difference. And that lets us rewrite this in another way if we want to, and that is that the energy storage is equal to one half times the capacitance times the potential difference squared. So those are the two ways to calculate the energy uh, storage in a capacitor. Um, and uh, these are equivalent. Use either one, you'll get the same answer. Okay, so let's see an example doing that. Um, so let's say that we want to find the total energy storage in a capacitor with a plate area of 15 meters squared, a dielectric constant for the material between the two plates of four, a distance between the two plates of one times 10 to the minus four meters. And we're gonna hook this up to a battery with a voltage of 15 volts. Well, the first thing we need to do is calculate the capacitance because in either of these two equations, we need to know the capacitance. And the capacitance is equal to the permittivity of free space, this constant, 
times the dielectric constant. Uh, times the area divided by the distance separating the two plates. And we get a capacitance of 5.31 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. Now that we have the capacitance, uh, we can think of which one of these two equations for energy storage is easiest to use. Uh, we're given the voltage, so we might as well just use the one that is in terms of voltage instead of charge. If we were given the charge, it would be easier to use the, the other one. But um, So the energy storage, don't get confused about... So whenever you see this E, uh, think about whether you want... Um, whether the question is asking you based on the context for the electric field vector magnitude or the energy storage. In this case, we want energy storage. Uh, so this is equal to one half times the capacitance times the voltage squared And we get an energy storage of 5.97 times 10 to the minus 4 joules, because we're in SI units.